Professor Dr. Chin C. Piao is a consultant cardiologist and associate professor of medicine in Malaysia. He graduated from the UK and obtained his specialist qualification in 1998. He has been researching into regenerative medicine and stem cells for almost 20 years. In 2006, his team made a breakthrough when they successfully used stem cells to treat patients with end stage heart failure. The results were presented at the prestigious Congress of European Society of Cardiology in Stockholm and published in the peer-reviewed journal of cytotherapy to critical acclaim. Cytopeutics were also among the first internationally to produce nerve cells, insulin-producing cells, cartilage cells, and parts of kidney and liver cells from stem cells for the clinical study of stroke, spinal cord injury, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, osteoarthritis, liver, and kidney failure. In addition to this, producing psoriasis. Stem cells are generally cells that have the ability to generate multiple copies of itself as well as the ability to turn into various other specialized tissues. There are several types of stem cells uh, but among them the mesenchymal stem cell is widely regarded currently as the true adult pluripotent stem cell which means that they are obtained not from the embryonic or from the fetal unborn baby but from the time the baby is born until adulthood. They have the ability to turn into many multiple cell types including heart muscle, cartilage and nerves. And they are found predominantly in the bone marrow but also in many other tissues that we know today including the cornea of the eye, the skin, the fat tissue, and of course also from the umbilical cord. The best source of mesenchymal stem cells is obviously from the youngest donor. And this would mean that the umbilical cord, whose donor is only one day old, will produce the youngest mesenchymal stem cells. This is important because these babies will not have been exposed to infection, to sunlight or other carcinogens, and if we can also trace their parents' and grandparents' health status and find them to be free of disease, then these stem cells will have had three generations of freedom from any disease such as cancer or other inherited conditions. We ensure that the stem cells are safe to be used, first of all by making sure that the source of the stem cells in this case from the umbilical cord, is thoroughly checked. And that also means that both the baby, the parents and grandparents are asked to come for a health check. For the baby and the parents, we further determined their genetic status in order to make sure that they have no mutation or genetic risk for developing cancer and other diseases. Thirdly, these cells are processed and stored in a GMP certified facility which means that from one cell to another cell the quality is maintained at the same high standards. GMP accreditation or good manufacturing practice for cell processing effectively ensured the method of cell transport, the cell labeling, the cell traceability, manufacturing, expansion and storage should be always of the same high standards and should not vary from one batch to another batch. The GMP accreditation is awarded by the regulatory body of the Ministry of Health. What are the current requirements and regulations governing stem cell research and treatment? Hemopoietic stem cells and umbilical cord stem cells are regarded as the most established form of stem cell therapy. Embryonic stem cells are strictly experimental while xenotransplantation or animal stem cells or the use of any animal cells is currently prohibited. Within the use of hemopoietic stem cells and mesenchymal stem cells, their use is most established in hemopoietic conditions such as lymphoma and leukemia. They are considered developmental and have strong potential in the treatment of cardiac diseases and neuro diseases. Under such conditions, they should be conducted as part of research 
and to be carried out only by suitably qualified medical specialists. At the moment, based on the current guidelines as issued by the National Stem Cell Oversight Committee, only medical specialists who are credentialed and privileged to conduct stem cell treatments may be allowed to do stem cell research. The stem cell research must be applied to the Medical Research and Ethics Committee and the medical specialist must also be GCP certified and have undertaken stem cell research from the laboratory to the preclinical stage and through the various stages of clinical trial setting. We currently have several stem cell programs uh, underway. These are conducted variously by doctors and researchers in private medical centres as well as in universities. The several programs that are being sanctioned and approved the are for stroke, for diabetes and its complications of diabetes foot ulcers, for cardiomyopathy or heart failure and for osteoarthritis. In heart disease, the way stem cells work is fascinating. We understand now that the heart contains their own stem cells and the mesenchymal stem cells injected into the heart merely activate, stimulate and wake up the cardiac stem cells to do their own job for their own body. In this case, the stem cells not only regenerate new heart muscle but also resolve old scar tissues. Uh, we were one of the first in the world to demonstrate the resolution of the scar tissue and the regeneration of the new heart muscle and we have published this and also presented this internationally to critical acclaim. In cerebral vascular disease, particularly stroke, we find that the stem cells when injected close to the brain have the ability to speed up the recovery of the brain following stroke. And we also find out that the earlier we treat the patient with stroke, the greater the chances of recovery. In fact, in our latest presentation presented in the ISCT in 2014, we demonstrated that 90% of our stroke patients treated within three months had a 90% recovery after just six weeks. Diabetes is a very huge problem. That burden of disease also means that not only we are not able to control the blood sugar in the body, but also diabetes will lead on to stroke, to heart disease, to critical limb ischemia such as diabetes foot ulcer, to kidney failure and also to blindness. I've already spoken about how stem cells may be used to treat patients with heart disease and stroke. But we find out that in fact, stem cells play a very pivotal role in reducing the inflammation and reducing the insulin resistance of the body to diabetes. We also demonstrated that these patients have the ability to uh, restore their eyesight and also to regenerate back parts of the muscle, tissue, bone and skin of patients with diabetes foot ulcer. We believe that the way this is done or achieved was because we were actually revascularization or restoring blood vessel supply to the leg and to the eye and to the kidney of these patients with diabetes through better uh, endothelial function, through better um, diabetes and sugar control and by also improving their sensitivity and responsiveness to insulin. Autoimmune diseases uh, actually mean that the body's own antibodies is turning around and fighting itself or attacking its own specialized tissues. In fact, we find that a lot of how the stem cells actually help in heart disease stroke, diabetes and other organ conditions is by their ability to modulate and to control the inflammation in our body. The mesenchymal stem cells can reduce the proliferative activity of T cells which secretes the antibodies in the first place. And through that mechanism of control, 
mesenchymal stem cells appear to also be able to control autoimmune diseases. So in fact, in psoriasis, we have a very successful, albeit small patient numbers of um, treating and controlling their disease. So this is what psoriasis looks like. And the patients have florid rash all over their body. After just six months of treatment, the same rash have resolved on this picture. While it is true that stem cells appear to be beneficial to patients with heart disease and neurovascular diseases and autoimmune diseases, however, stem cells will not be able to treat all kinds of problems. Some of the other big problems that we face in the world are liver disease and kidney disease. For both of these problems, we have been pleasantly surprised at the recovery of the kidney function and the liver function when we have treated patients with existing conditions being enrolled in other study programs. Wellness is very difficult to define. We all age and while we do not fear aging, we always prefer to look young and youthful always. But why do we age? We age because our body is unable to replace and regenerate itself every day. Hence, we need to find ways of restoring our youth and restoring our stamina and restoring our activity and restoring our life. The fundamental building blocks to this restoration, preservation and repair are stem cells. If we have demonstrated in our current and previous study programs of our success in regenerating the heart, in regenerating and restoring the nervous system, improving the kidney and liver function, then why not try to use the stem cells at an earlier age before the loss of stem cells and loss of tissue lead to a clinically outward disease. There is a role for using stem cells for wellness and for disease prevention. In fact, we have evidence to suggest that the use of our stem cells in patients are able to reduce the speed of aging and even to maintain youth. I say this because we have found in our patients the levels of certain hormones and growth factors which are responsible for keeping the body young and youthful. These are IGF or insulin-like growth factor, sex hormones such as estrogen in women and testosterone in men, and DHEA, the precursors of these sex hormones. And when they increase, there is a corresponding feel good, look good, as well as act active and alert for these patients. Because we know that these hormones are responsible for sustaining and even increasing the basal metabolic rate of these patients. We must, of course, first and foremost, live a healthy and balanced lifestyle. It is pointless to rely only on stem cells if we are also smoking or drinking heavily or not exercising and maintaining a poor, unbalanced diet. So all of this should be done first. What we also do, and I always encourage, is for patients to undergo a detoxification program before stem cells and to keep this going on a regular basis after stem cell treatment. Patients may start to feel the effect as early as two weeks to six weeks following treatment. Of course, what we are providing are stem cells that grow gradually rather than a hormone or a growth factor that acts as a pharmaceutical effect that has a major boost but then leaves the patient feeling more depressed afterwards. So within about two to six weeks, patients would feel generally their skin texture uh, improving. From six to three months, they may even start to feel that their stamina and their cardiovascular fitness increasing. Generally, we will also do a blood test between three to six months to demonstrate the improvement or benefit in recovery of kidney and liver function and increase in growth factors and hormones for our clients. 
with our current program, in all of our clinical conditions, uh, the presence of active or past history of cancer will exclude the patient from participation. We do this because we did not want the risk of recurrence of cancer by chance to be associated on the use of stem cells. However, my team and I at Cytopeutics are currently looking into the use of a different type of cells known as immune cells or natural killer cells and dendritic cells that have the ability to hunt out remnants of cancer and metastasis and to destroy these cancer cells. This may one day prove to be the targeted therapy for all types of cancer. The use of stem cells currently is still in its infancy. It is currently employed in treatments only under research and developmental programs. However, we have been using stem cells for treatment of hemopoietic cancers such as lymphoma and leukemia for over 50 years around the world. And the evidence point to the use of these stem cells outside of hemopoietic cancers to be also very consistent and very promising. I hope one day, as we better refine the stem cells and their role and activities, we may one day be able to use stem cells as a personalized medicine for patients with various kinds of diseases. For patients who would like to enroll in our program, uh, we would encourage them to get in touch with us so that we are able to evaluate them based on any past reports that they have. We are of course also able to conduct many of these tests ourselves to determine whether they are finally eligible or not. Of course, it is most important that they find the right doctor at the right medical centre who are currently approved to undertake such medical programs.